Well, I said we were going to start at 9. Does anyone want to check and see what time it is for me, please? Please welcome to the stage Senior Nicholas Wong to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and congratulations to Conquer Carlisle School of o Class of 2021. Please welcome Piper Herring from the class of 2021 who will now sing the national anthem. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Please be seated. Before we begin this joyous celebration, I ask everybody to please shut their cell phone off. Let's enjoy a, an hour or two together in the hot sun, but we're not going to complain because we get to be here on the day of graduation. It is now my privilege to introduce the superintendent of schools, Dr. Lori Hunter. Good morning. Welcome parents, faculty, members of the Concord Carlisle Regional School Committee, Principal Mastrulo, Assistant Principals Miller and Stahl, other distinguished guests, and most importantly, members of the class of 2021. Absolutely. Let's just take it in and appreciate the moment. We're here together with an unrestricted crowd, unmasked, celebrating one of the most important traditions in education. Among the many things we took for granted, this was one. Enjoy every minute. It was not even a year ago that I stood in this spot at the close of the delayed graduation for the class of 2020. I thought I was reveling in the elation of being able to hold graduation at all. As I looked around at this field and its decor though, I was hit hard realizing that the concerns for last year's senior class were dwarfed by the endless list of unknowns that face the class of 2021. The unknowns proved true, as did the changes and challenges. But that wasn't the whole story. Something else happened that needs to be told. 
Normally, I feel great pressure to be inspiring when I speak in this setting. This year, though, the class of 2021 inspired us, and this is a perfect chance to share that part of the story. The class of 2021 took crisis, held on to hope, and simultaneously created opportunity. That opportunity showed itself in finding your voice. You told us how you felt, shared what you needed, and insisted that we hear you. The more difficult things got, the louder your voices. You told us last summer that school needed to reopen, that every day school setting that we all took for granted was now precious and important. As a result of your voice, we pushed and took chances journeying into the unknown, believing it was worth the risk. When we did reopen, you showed us it was worth every bit of the effort it took. You told us that your relationships with each other were the most important thing to you. You made it clear that the alphabetic hybrid model was going to impact that, and at least 200 of you engaged in petitioning and emailing us to change it. We tried and tried and couldn't fix it. However, we never forgot what you told us and fought to find ways to bring you together this year, leading to a full reopening in April in this week's senior events. You told us that you cared deeply for others, isolated by the pandemic, and organized pen pals for senior citizens who you realized had it worse than you. You never forgot the first responders and medical providers who received words of support as well. You told us that the environment mattered deeply to you even in the pandemic and focused on ways to expand bike riding to school, planting pollinators on campus, and restoring the com composting program to the cafeteria. You told us our communication with you directly mattered so you knew of the facts and information firsthand, especially when things were uncertain and changed quickly. So we emailed you directly and used social media to reach you in as many different ways as we could so that your feedback and input was always considered. You told us that CCHS is not always a welcoming place for everyone. You bravely told us particular stories of blatant aggressions and unconscious bias that make school a painful and isolated place for some. You told us that there is work to do for all students to feel accepted in our schools. Your personal stories forced us to face the truth, reflect on what was working and what isn't, and to begin to build plans for what will be a long journey toward the inclusive learning environment we envision. You told us that CCHS needs to be a place where it is okay to not feel okay sometimes. You told us that by naming the anxiety, stress, and worry that comes with high school, that we could destigmatize it. You helped us to see that the stress and worry could be offset by caring, compassionate adults who are flexible, supportive, and heroes themselves, especially when these stressors became more acute in a crisis that would last for over a year. We had been looking for some huge fix for years, and you showed us the answers were simple and right in front of us the whole time. Your voices were loud and powerful and sometimes piercing. You did not allow for the status quo and forced us to reflect on what was really important and our approaches to all of it. We will all wonder what happened because of COVID and what happened despite COVID. I suspect this class's impact on this school is a perfect combination of both. For years, we had goals for increasing student voice and efficacy. As a group, you pushed our adult-focused goals aside and showed us that we did not need an action plan for how to increase student voice. We just needed to listen. You will leave behind a changed student body and group of educators, staff, and leaders. Indeed, you leave behind a changed CCHS. You inspired us, challenged us, made us hopeful when that was very, very difficult. Take that voice with you and change the next world you immerse yourself in. We will all be better for it. Of that, I'm sure. Best wishes to the class of 2021. Congratulations. Good morning. My name is Michael Mastrullo, and I'm the principal of CCHS. And I want to welcome everybody to this commencement ceremony celebrating the great class of 2021. I love graduation. It's possibly my favorite day of the year. I love seeing students before me with great potential. There is energy, enthusiasm, and excitement in the air. I also love to laugh and to make people laugh. And I love making parents and guardians cry. A happy cry, of course. I don't plan to disappoint. 
This morning, I hope to impart a few words of wisdom on the class of 2021, but before I do, I want to thank members of the Parents Association, and by members, I mean the moms, for helping to organize some great events for our kids. And I have one question. Would anything in this world get done without moms? There are very few positives we can draw from this COVID-19 experience, but I will give you one. Similar to post-World War II, when this country experienced the baby boom, COVID-19 produced the canine version of the baby boom. The puppy boom, if you will. Seems like everyone got a dog during COVID. For the rare kid out there who begged for a dog only to be told, told no by their parents, I wanna huddle up and talk strategy. Next time I want you to beg, beg really hard for a baby brother or sister. I promise you'll get a puppy. <laughs> this puppy boom makes total sense. With everyone cooped up in their house, a little bored, a bit sick of each other, what were we supposed to do? Like talk to each other? So people started buying puppies in a welcome, as a welcome distraction and because dogs are awesome. Dogs can teach us a lot. And that's the crux of this speech, what we can all learn from dogs. This puppy boom started as a trickle, an extra dog here or there in the neighborhood, maybe a few more on social media. And then by May 2020, when everyone realized this COVID-19 wasn't a passing shower, the slow trickle of puppies turned into a tsunami of dogs. Dogs taking over neighborhoods, dominating social media feeds, every holiday card featuring the family dog. All of a sudden, everybody loves to walk. Hiking trails have more traffic than Starbucks down the street. October, I logged on to a Zoom meeting and there was an equal number of people and dogs. By December, I was sent to a breakout room in Zoom only to find me in dogs. And this is my nightmare. Nobody knows how to hit mute. No one knows how to turn the mic on. One dog barks, they all bark. And every time I talk, the entire screen just gives me like the doggy hell tilt. They're like, what? What? What's he saying? Needless to say, nothing gets done in, this meetings, in these meetings. In some respect, it's no different than meetings with all humans. But at least you enter those meetings with the hope, however small, of some productivity. But I love dogs, and in a minute I'm going to tell you why we all should aspire to be more like a dog. But before a life lesson for our graduates. You need someone in your life, someone with a high de a degree of integrity to provide you with honest, unbiased, and direct feedback. That is how you improve. They tell you straight, the good and the bad. When I ask someone how my hair looks, I don't want someone to say, it looks good. It doesn't, I don't have any. <laughs> that is how you improve, they tell you straight. Second life lesson for graduates. Be curious and continue to learn. You might recall in March 2020, the very beginning of this pandemic, I wrote a blog post and sent it to all parents and students encouraging everyone to develop a new skill. I took my own advice and I developed a new skill. This newfound skill might surprise you, you might not believe it, it's pretty remarkable, but in order for this speech to have any cohesion, for it to make even a modicum of sense, it has to be true, so I need you to get on board. I taught my dog how to speak, English. It's true, might seem far-fetched, but it's been a tough year and I, I need some help here, okay? Due to COVID, it was hard to connect with people, so to get this honest feedback, I turned to my talking dog, Gus. We were in lockdown so I could get honest feedback often, daily. And what I discovered after 18 months of honest feedback from my dog, I'm absolutely perfect. Every time I do anything, all Gus just looks at me, he's like, that was perfect. His nickname for me is perfect. It's quite refreshing actually to have so much honesty, but I said, Gus. He said, yes, handsome. I said, well, blushing, you're so honest. I love that about you. But Gus, in order for me to improve, I need some direct feedback. So there must've been something during this 18 months that I can improve upon. He said, you're perfect. And so I'm kind and I like to reward kind behavior. So every time he did this, 
I gave him a dog bone. And like any good relationship, it should be reciprocated. So I wanted to give Gus direct and honest feedback. So for example, I took him to the vet and what we discovered is Gus has a little bit of a weight issue. We got home and I said, Gus, I have some good news and some bad news. I said, what do you want first, good or the bad? He said, hit me with the good, perfect. I said, the good news is I'm your owner. He said, that's perfect. I said, the bad news is you're overweight. He said, you feed me too much. I said, you're welcome. He said, you're perfect. I gave him a bone. <laughs> I said, the Gus, since we're in the midst of some, some uh, difficult conversations, I'm gonna give you some additional honest feedback to help you improve that might be hard to hear. I said, I'm through with your recent interest in, uh, in home improvement projects, but dismembering the couch is not really doing it for me. I said, I'm thrilled in your recent interest in fashion, but eating my shoes is not very helpful. And it's pretty well documented at this point, Gus, that you're not missing any meals. You're running a surplus of meals. He said, you're perfect. So at this point, you're probably trying to hard to extrapolate what you can learn from this speech. And I am too, I actually have no idea where this is going right now. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you 10 things that you can learn from dogs. Number one, dogs drink a lot of water and so should you. Number two, dogs live in the moment. The past is gone, the future is uncertain, so live in the moment. Number three, dogs are thankful. Feed them the same dinner every night. They're like, this is awesome, thank you for feeding me. I want you to feed your future child the same cereal for a week and see what happens. So be thankful. Number four, dogs never take good things, however routine, for granted. Grab the leash today, tomorrow, the next day, every time, like, this is amazing. You are so perfect. I can't believe you're walking me. So don't take things for granted. Dogs let go of the past, even dogs that have endured really terrible things, they just need a little love and they can live a great life. So let go of the past. Number six, they live, they love unconditionally. Every time you walk in the door, that dog does not care. Whether you had a good day or a bad day, they're just gonna love you unconditionally. Number eight, dogs are loyal. Always be a loyal friend. Number nine, dogs are genuine. They're never trying to be somebody else. Gus is not walking around trying to be Obama's Portuguese water dog. He's just like, I'm the man and my owner is perfect. And last but not least, dogs are enthusiastic and positive. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, nothing great was ever achieved, achieved without enthusiasm. So every day I try to be positive and enthusiastic. That's 10 things that we can all aspire to be more like a dog. In closing, the headline reads one year, two months, three and a half weeks, 450 days. That is the exact amount of time from the first day of school you missed in 2020 until today. 450 days. If I told you on day one that your life was gonna be turned upside down, if I told you that everything you hold dear, school, sports, drama, music, social interactions, trips, trips to the movies, the mall, etc., if I told you all that was gonna be gone in an instant, I wager all of you would have said, there's no way I can do that. But you did, and it should serve as a reminder you're stronger and more resilient than you know. It was not easy. I would wager there were some nights you cried in your room alone. I would wager there were some nights alone in your room you were too sad to cry. But you made it. We made it. You made it. Nobody gets here alone. Remember in the beginning I said I, I like to make family members cry? I need my emotional member of the family to really pay attention to this next part, please. Your parents sit here so proud and so happy that you're graduating, moving on to the next phase of your life. I would wager, however, that they miss picking you up when you fell off your bike. I would wager they will miss wiping ice cream off your chin. I will wager they will miss tucking you in at night. I know this because I'm a principal and a father, and I'm gonna miss those things too. So wherever your path leads, when you return home, before you sprint out the door to be with your friends, make sure you give some extra time to the ones that love you most. They need it and deserve it. 
Lastly, I would be remiss if I did not give a few thank yous. I've gone out of my way to, to sincerely thank everyone this year. Parents, teachers, staff, the superintendent. They deserve a big round of applause for everything they did. I want to thank the students for making all of this worth it. Good leaders share the credit and accept the blame. And I want to recognize two people who without their efforts, none, and I mean none of this would have been possible. Without their tireless commitment and sacrifice, none of this would have happened. Nobody besides me knows how much they sacrificed to make sure kids had a great year. And they also deserve a very loud, loud round of applause, and that is Brian Miller and Katie Stahl. <laughs> to my graduates, I wish you nothing but the very best. And now it is my pleasure to introduce class president, Vishal Chandra. Good morning. On behalf of the class of 2021, I would like to welcome and thank the administration, teachers, staff, and our families for being here with us today. I would also like to thank all of you for putting me up here and for giving me the opportunity to speak to you. It has been such a privilege to serve as the president of this class during our time here, a class which has forged new friendships been a force for change during difficult times and has weathered the last year and a half admirably. It is an honor to stand before a class like ours, before people like you, and I'm confident that any one of us could have stood behind this podium this morning. I'm not here to talk about what we've all heard before what we've all experienced firsthand since our junior spring. And I promise not to use the word unprecedented. <laughs> but I am here to share one simple feeling with you. I am here to put our collective breath of fresh air to words, to share with everyone here what it feels like to be out of the woods and what we were up to while we were in there. It is no surprise to me that we delivered both in and out of school this year. We took our APs from school this time, we garnered athletic and academic awards, and we forged new clubs together. Intersections, I'm looking at you. We parked in each other's spots, sorry Mr. Hernandez, and we tried our best to follow the arrows on the ground most of the time. And even though it's been a while, let's not forget, we also made our plans for next year. Things that might seem normal, we did in the middle of a, <laughs> well, I said I wouldn't say it. <laughs> but we didn't stop there. We went above and beyond. One of our classmates made it to national television, some to the Boston Globe. And many more have inspired change right here in our own community. I'm so very proud to call myself your classmate. But back to the breath of fresh air. This past year, while many around the country have seen bumps in the road and setbacks along the way, we have been so fortunate to be trending back to a better normal. And we've played no small part in that ourselves. Going from cohorts to our beloved CCHS community, from Zoom calls to full classes, and from napping during lunch blocks to going out with friends, we're back. We've come together in ways we might not have thought possible just a few months ago. We've, 
We've eaten burritos on wet bleachers together, right out here. We've played blackjack in the mud together. We've hurt our wrists at the driving range together, harder than you might think. <laughs> and we've served our community in honor of David Prifty together. We have carried our water guns together. Some of us still are, you know who you are. <laughs> and soon we will all throw our caps together. We have been together despite what has stood in our way. And that is a testament to this class's capabilities. I will miss attending a school where you all fill the halls. I will miss our little run-ins and chats in the passing periods. I will miss our teachers, and I will miss you all. We have had so much fun together, so many discussions, so many laughs, and shared so much time. It is sad to leave at this rebounding time, but the fresh air will continue. The comeback will continue, and there is no better place for it than wherever we are headed next. So, class of 2021, before I say goodbye, I would just like to tell you one more thing. I would like to breathe the fresh air with you one more time. <sighs> we made it. And now that we have, we can make it through anything. Thank you and congratulations. Now it is my honor to introduce Miss Tracy Davies. <laughs> Tracy Davies has been a teacher in the CCHS Social Studies Department for the past 28 years and is a proud member of the Concord Carlisle Teachers Association. She earned a Bachelor of Arts in History from Williams College and a Master of Arts in Teaching from Boston University. In addition to teaching US history and two social studies electives on the American presidency and on current affairs, my personal favorites, uh, Ms. Davies is the co-advisor of the annual Dennis Cleary Moot Court Competition. A competition named after her mentor, whose captivating teaching Ms. Davies still aspires to match someday. In her spare time, Ms. Davies also raised three amazing children whom she loves very much and of whom she is very proud. Ms. Davies truly loves her students, her colleagues, and the tennis player Andy Murray, <laughs> and the New York Mets. Please welcome Ms. Tracy Davies. This is harder than it looks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Members of the school committee and administration, my fellows, faculty and staff, parents, grandparents, friends, bored younger siblings of the graduates, <laughs> and of course, the maskless 2021 graduating class of Concord Carlisle High School. I almost forgot what you guys looked like, but wow, it is so, so great to actually see your smiling faces here this morning. A special shout out to my senior advisory, wherever you guys are. We'll always have the freshman bake off. We peaked early, but we peaked. <laughs> and several of my colleagues and retired colleagues have children and grandchildren in your graduating class so special congratulations and love to them and to their families. 
When representatives from your class approached me about being your graduation speaker, I must admit my initial reaction was, um, no, 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 no. <laughs> that really was my initial reaction. <laughs> Only twice before in my life had I spoken in front of this many people. Once at my own high school graduation, which luckily was in the era long before iPhones, so there is no digital record of either my performance or the exquisite hairstyles of the 1980s. And a second time, 19 years ago, as the graduation speaker for the Concord Carlisle class of 2002. Both times, my legs twitched uncontrollably behind the podium for approximately the first 30 to 40 seconds of my address. And sadly, some things never change. And now I've got the cheap seats behind me and they can see it, which is unfortunate. <laughs> but then each time I rebounded and did not actually completely pass out. But that speech for the Concord Carlisle class of 2002 remains one of the absolute highlights of my career. And as the last few weeks passed, I realized that I had the chance to relive the genuine joy of that experience. And I also realized that no one in your class was even alive when I delivered those remarks. So if I got desperate, <laughs> I could deliver the exact same speech and who would even know? I didn't really plan to do that, but let's just say it was a pretty solid fallback plan as I procrastinated in drafting this address. So, imagine my dismay when one morning a few weeks ago, as my fallback plan was looking more and more appealing, I arose to a headline proclaiming that a university president in South Carolina had been forced out of his job for plagiarizing a commencement address. <laughs> To, qu to quote the rarely quoted in commencement addresses, but nonetheless brilliant philosopher, Scooby-Doo, I thought to myself, rut row. <laughs> After quickly Googling, can you plagiarize yourself? And tragically discovering that the answer is yes, I decided it was time to woman up and actually write an original address. And as I did so, I came to truly appreciate and be honored by the fact that you guys, a class that is very, very special to me and to all of us, granted me the opportunity to be the last adult at CC to offer you their thoughts and their hopes for your future. I think I speak for all of your teachers and counselors when I say we are proud of your academic accomplishments, have loved seeing your amazing theatrical, musical, artistic, legal, broadcasting, Pledge of Allegiance reciting, and athletic gifts, and admired that you've maintained your senses of humor and curiosity all the way until the end of this, sorry Vishal, where are you, unprecedented year. <laughs> so thank you for letting me share this joyous day with you and with your families. I'll never forget it. In 2015, President Obama spoke at the 50th anniversary of the Selma March. You may recall from US history that in 1965, the civil rights activist and American hero John Lewis, who died last summer, led a group of 600 marchers in Alabama in a quest for voting rights for black Americans. The marchers were brutally beaten by state troopers while crossing a bridge near the start of their march. John Lewis and many others almost died on that bridge. But the Selma March, after a second triumphant attempt, ultimately resulted in the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Each year, people gather to reenact the Selma March, and imagine how fitting it was that at the 50th anniversary of what is known as Bloody Sunday, our first black president delivered what was one of the finest speeches of his career. In his address, President Obama said the following, and you guys really have to pay attention because I'm going to use these quotes later. What, <laughs> you know how I am in class, right? Uh, what, here it is. What greater expression of faith in the American experiment than this? What greater form of patriotism is there than the belief that America is not yet finished, that we are strong enough to be self-critical, that each successive generation can look upon our imperfections and decide that it is in our power to remake this nation to more closely align with our highest ideals. 
President Obama went on to say, it's the idea held by generations of citizens who believed that America is a constant work in progress, who believed that loving this country requires more than singing its praises or avoiding uncomfortable truths. It requires the occasional disruption, the willingness to speak out for what's right and shake up the status quo. As I prepared this address, I found myself wondering, what if President Obama's words of wisdom and challenge also apply to our individual lives and not just to our nation as a whole? What if you, our beloved graduates, are works in progress? And so is everyone here, no matter how old or young. Maybe in our own lives, we do avoid ever feeling uncomfortable and avoid confronting uncomfortable truths. And what if, like our nation, we as individuals occasionally need a disruption and a change in the status quo to make progress? It seems like everything, whether it's advice given to graduates in commencement addresses, or people's opinions on current affairs, or posts on social media, are often in absolutist terms. If I were giving you a more traditional commencement address that didn't mention Scooby-Doo, I, <laughs> I would tell you to work your hardest at everything you do. Always follow your passions. Always treat everyone as your equal because they are your equal. Always be brave enough to stand up for what is morally right and never make snap judgments and assumptions about another person based on their gender, race, religion, occupation, where they're from, or who they love. These are some of my own... Yeah. These are some of my own core beliefs, but what if such sweeping absolutisms are actually counterproductive? By setting such a high bar, listeners could either become defensive and dismissive and say, I already do all those things, or they could view such advice as such a high bar, they give up trying or just view them as platitudes. What if we admit that none of us here do all of those things all of the time? And if we're all works in progress, that's actually OK. But if we start by at least sometimes recognizing when we are treating others meanly, unfairly, or with bias, or without compassion, and then do it less and less. And if we start to notice occasions when someone did or said something that we should have stood up to, but in that moment just didn't have what it took to do so, but then maybe the next time, not every time, but sometimes, we are brave enough to go against the crowd and stand up for what's right. Then we're a work in progress. And slowly but surely, we'll become better people living in a better world. Perhaps your moment to stand up will be at a fraternity hazing or at a Starbucks when a customer is treating a cashier with a total lack of respect, or in a business meeting when someone once again interrupts or dismisses the smartest woman in the room. Uh, clap for that one, I like that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be Miss Fox. Just okay. <laughs> and, and maybe, even if it's only that one time you find the bravery to stand up, it really, really will make a difference, at least to someone. We don't all have to be John Lewis. We just have to try a little harder. It's surely much easier to never get uncomfortable and introspective, to have your views and dism dismiss others out of hand because you think you're always right, to never question the path you're on, or the justness of our society, to allow your devices to prevent you from ever being alone with your thoughts and asking yourself big questions. Of course that's easier. It's also easier to stay in your comfort zone in terms of the types of people you hang out with, the publications you read, and the places you live. People tend to have their views and read anything that disagrees with them with motivated skepticism. They're looking for reasons to rip those other views apart. In college, sometimes members of the same sports teams only hang out with each other. Increasingly, people in America are living surrounded by others who share their exact political views. 
very comfortable, always right. But maybe, as President Obama said, we do occasionally need a disruption and a different perspective. Perhaps if more of us were bold enough to interact with and even become friends with and maybe even love people that are not carving copies of ourselves and occasionally read views that challenge our own instead of always affirming them, we might be on the way to having a society that is more just and more civil, a work in progress, if you will. And we who are older, And we who are older, not that old, but older, are counting on you guys to show us the way. As President Obama said near the end of his Selma speech, for everywhere in this country, there are first steps to be taken and new ground to cover and bridges to be crossed. And it is you, the young and fearless at heart, the most diverse and educated generation in our history who the nation is waiting to follow. But I'll contradict myself and admit there are two things that are absolute in life. As a diehard New York Mets fan, speaking to many equally diehard Red Sox fans, it is an absolute, undeniable truth that the Yankees Oh, he said I can say it. He said I can say it. OK, ready? Let's repeat. I thought I couldn't say it. I crossed it out. OK, ready? I can, Ms. Dr. Hunter? Go. OK, OK, ready? Uh, it is an absolute, undeniable truth that the Yankees suck. I'll see you. I'll see Mr. Mistrullo at 9 AM on Monday. <laughs> it's also an absolute truth that your parents and grandparents that are here today, their hearts constricted with a touch of heartbreak that soon you will not be with them every day, love you like no one else in the world. Grandparents are the best people in the world. <laughs> if you are lucky enough to still have some, take a few minutes to ask them what their lives were once like. My own grandmother lived to be 98, and I wish I'd asked her so much more. Well, I'm sure she wasn't totally feigning delight in yet another exaggerated tale of my heroics on the field hockey field. She could have told me so much more if I had only asked. So here's one last Davies homework assignment for you. Have those conversations with your grandparents or some other older person in your life and email me and share their recollections. One final warning, though, about your parents. Mr. Oh, you're not going to believe this. Ready? Uh, uh, this is funny. I estimate that there is approximately a 52% chance that once you leave home, they are going to get a puppy to replace you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that puppy is going to be a lot cuter than you. <laughs> and if you've never had a dog, part of you will be thinking, I asked for a dog all my life, and now you're getting a puppy? <laughs> And those will be justifiable, seething jealousies and resentments. <laughs> but let them love that puppy, because trust me, they love you more. That's hard. <laughs> Someday, if you're fortunate, your own child will be placed in your arms for the first time and you'll realize what all parents know is the greatest gift in the world. So cut your parents a little slack today if they grow teary-eyed. It probably seems like only yesterday that they put you on that kindergarten bus with great trepidation. If they were like me, I'm sure they were convinced that after one trip on the bus, the mysteries of Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, and human procreation would all be laid out for you by some cynical little fifth grader. <laughs> Imagine their relief when you came home that first day as pure and innocent as ever. But now we are sending you off for more than just a day. We're sending you off to be adults, and I know you will be great ones, or at least ones who I passionately hope are ever striving to be just a little better, a little kinder, a little more open-minded, a little more willing to stand up for what is right, and a little less comfortable each day. I'm so proud of all of you. We'll miss you so much, but I know the future is bright in your hands. Congratulations, one and all.
Thank you, Miss Davies. And uh, now, in full disclosure, um, I this is my third school and third principalship. So, as a work in progress, learning that um, if you use something from a previous speech, it's plagiarism. It was unique this speech today, but to say that it was all unique, Miss Davies, is a little bit of a fetch. So, thank you for allowing me to name that now. Since I said it, I can't be in trouble for it. Thank you. I would like to introduce. Sarah Wilson, chair of the Concord Carlisle Regional School District School Committee, who will affirm the moment we've been waiting for, that the class of 2021 has met all their graduation requirements at the state and local level, and to present the members of the class of 2021 and read their names and their diplomas, please welcome Hannah Bruno and Ray Pavlik. And one more note before we begin. Normally, we practice several times before senior week. Uh, to everyone here, we, there was no practice. So we're just hopeful, OK? Be hopeful. Be kind. We are going to call you up when we read your name. I will hand you the sleeve that uh, housed the diploma we've already given you. And we're not going to shake hands, OK? But I wish you. Best. All right, before we get into names, I just want to say, you guys, as you come up to the stage, you're going to pause for one second and ta have your picture taken. To the left of the podium, my left. You're going to go all the way to the cone <laughs> after the stage. Excuse me a second. Remember when I said we didn't have time to practice? Um, Let's just gonna, we're gonna start all over. Okay, kids, you're gonna, we're gonna read your name. I'm gonna hand you your diploma. Then you're gonna walk down there to the red cone. They're gonna take your picture. You're gonna smile, and we are gonna be so happy for you. All right, class of 2021, are you ready? Vishal Chandra. Shri Yu Kanlokar. <laughs> Zoe Jackson. <laughs> Emily Catherine Oldis. <laughs> Julia Rose Clark. <laughs> William Owen. Aiko Lauren Ma. Yeah. Anastasia yeah. Alston. Yeah. Walid Jarad Al Sharafi. Yeah. Yeah. Hannah Abigail Alter. Yeah. Yeah. Athos Peter Apollos. Nicholas Adam Arado. Alexander Sarab Atai. Lita Renee Ayadi. Ian Bailey. Austin Michael Barrick. Corey Jean Barrick. Cameron Montbach Bartlett. Hannah Rose Beakley. 
True Liberty Becker. Ennis Ahmed Ben Hamida. Ruth Jasalon Benyo. Iris Victoria Bergman. John Patrick Burlam. Fiona Battelle. Jack Braden Bloomgren. Isabella Nicole Borgen. James Declan Boyle. John William Boyle. Olivia Dora Boyle. Gabriella Barbara Braceres. Sarah Grace Brady. Anna Martha Brooks. Madeline Rose Burns. Catherine Mary Butts. Simon Cadavid. Joseph Richard Caggiano. Katrin Marie Carey. Daniel Matthew Sorconi. Wan Tong Chan. Gregory Checkler. Alan Chen. Jasmine Chung. Kevin Chang. William James Cobb. Andrew Harrison Cohen. Brittany Madison Cohen. Stephen Matthew Cohen. Nicholas C. Coletti. Oscar Charles Collier. Sophia Congram. Paul James Connolly. Peter Follinsby Cook. Jordan Andrew Corbett. Shannon Erin Corcoran. Michael Roman Courtney. Isabel Lola Kramer. Annie Creamer. Maya Christine Cunningham. Bo Cup. Liam James Curley. Luke Henri Kuypers. Kayla Isabel DeRosa. William Ross DeLise. Avery Grace DeMeo. Rachel Dettelbach.
Ramel Joshua Dias. Juliana Lucia de Cesare. Eric Andrea Damasio. Isabel Ann Donardo. Erin Christine Marie Donahue. Stephanie Marie Donovan. Charlotte Grace Dressler. Thomas Michael Drew. Rohit Gerard D'Souza. Addison Merrill Dunham. Derek Shannon Duplessis. Jack Henry Eaton. Sophia Elizabeth Eckler. Aiden Scott Edmondson. Roman Park Urkoli. Elix Exortier. Grace Fadul. Nicholas Jose Fandel. <laughs> Hannah Farah Morspoor. Yeah! Christopher Conrad Feist. Yeah, Campbell Rose Field. Yeah! Allison Gray Flavin. Yeah! Anna Victoria Forsberg. Benjamin David France. Margaret Scott Francini. Michaela Famaria Francois. Kara Miles Fritz. Virginia Ainsley Cloda Gagne. Yeah. William James William Garrison. Yeah. Logan Joanne Gaston. Yeah. Gray Perkins Goudreau. Yeah. Reed Curtis Geckel. Grace Kathleen Gernon. Tilo William Giorgetti. Eric Walter Glitzenstein. Finnegan Taj Gormley. Ryan Grace. Elizabeth Claire Graziani. Caroline Elizabeth Gregory. Thomas Henry Grahan. John Christopher Griffin. Sophia Elizabeth Grimmett. Crystal Marie Haas. Maximilian Joseph Hamill. Dylan O'Neill Hansen. 
Piper Bartlett Herring. Allison Elizabeth Harrington. Kimberly Grace Ann Hayes. Christian James Healy. Nicholas Jacob Healy. Cooper Jack Hill. Eli Keith Hill. Nyla Horn. Sophia Younger Hubsher. Nicola Katina Hunt. Zuhair Husseini. Ryan Robert Igo. Charles Paul Ezra Lagat. Dallas Jade Jackson. Isabella Horton Jackson. Reese Alexander Jackson. Tyler Christian Rodriguez Jamo. Caroline Elizabeth Jansen. Anna Irene Jasinski. Edward Stephen Jellen. Evan Johnson. Nora Margaret Johnson. Sophia Hartley Johnson. Cooper Jones. Matthew Paul Joyce. Elise Adams Judge. Yeah. Mo Nava Kablatsky. Yeah. Andrew James Kamenek. Yeah. Alexander John Keen. Yeah. Emma Rose Carimo. Caroline Haviland Kessler. Eric James Kidder. Jack Matthew Kidder. Isabel Judith Kilty. Margot Ruby Kissinger. Patrick Christopher Cotelli. Marco Darius Kovacevic. Tal Kronrod. Cameron Daniel Krug. Philip Ivo Custura. Molly Lanigan. Hannah Rose Laracuente. Joachim Marcel Laurent. Ro May Lavery. Jake Lee. Woo! 
Matthew David Lehman. Helena Lepre. Catherine Arcadia Lerner Teves. Jeffrey Lau. Connor James Lima. Najia Ann Lloyd. Sarah Catherine Long. Isabella Rose Lopresti. Lev Lessie. Lissy. Rudy Ma. David Ma. Quinn Noah Macy. James Maloney. Maya Grace Maloof. Madeline Grace Morano. Nicolo Vincent Martinelli. Aaron Martinin. William Chase McCarthy. Nora Margaret McClure. Lily Catherine McCullough. Olivia Grace Fong McDonald. Margaret Rose McGregor. Lauren Ann McElhenney. Isabeau Victoria McKenna. Alexandra Megan McKinley. Tyler John McMorrow. Donovan James Meehan. Thomas Howe Meehan. Allison Adeline Milando. Gabrielle Lee Myrak. Jeffrey Johnson Mobley Chan. Georgia Ann Monet. Charles John Moreau. Bryce Mottershed. Aria Naidu. Emmeline Dylan Nero. Michael Na. Ella Suzanne Nickel. Ryan Patrick Nigborowitz. Aiden Michael O'Connor. Kevin Joseph O'Neill.
Benjamin Givens O'Rourke. Edward, Edward Phillips O'Rourke. Anna Corey O'Sullivan. Whitney Maywa Orloff. Alexis Maya Pillay. Kathy Kayun Pan. Olivia Parody. Christopher Park. Alden Bradstreet Parker. William Elasdair Partridge. Carly Petianco. Naya Petianco. Joshua Graham Pierce. Charlotte Naomi Pendock. David Samuel Peppercorn. Jeremy D. Pietropalo. Courtney Doyle Piper. Joshua Andreas Pixley. Owen Jacob Plusco. Riley May Porer. Patricia Del Sol Poulin. Ainsley Powers. Caitlin Noel Prinos. Catherine Shelby Quinlan. Sophia Ann Vitali Rafael. Natalie Ephraimo Reed. Charles Laper Reikley. James Edward Riley. Catherine Lassoon Rice. Ezra Allen Rivera. <laughs> Nolan Henry Burrell Roberts. <laughs> Charles Higgins Robichaux. <laughs> Daniel Rojas. Jonathan Michael Rolf. David Tobias Roos. Zoe Elizabeth Rusalamos Kalajaropoulos. Amar Yuri Ruthen. Avi Paul Ruthen. Florian Massimo Sabatini. Eleanor Jane Sablock. Vera Grace Sablock. Oliver Samueli. Grace Elizabeth Sampson. 
Maria Corazon Sanderson. Devin Dekai Sands. Keshler Sannon. Nicholas Jose Santos. Regis Alexander Schaefer. John Popowell Schiffer. Schiffer. William Carpenter Scheffler. Julia Johanna Schmid. Thomas Gabriel Schur. Anthony Vincent Ciccoloni. Maxwell Seeger. Akshaya Sitharam. Arav Garang Shah. Jessica Shang. Laurel Francis Shirakin. Bijan Jacob Sharifi. Edward Shi. Phoebe Amelia Shutt. Cole Bailey Seifer. Lily Elizabeth Sills. Ellerly Grace Sims. Margaret Kelly Smith. Maxwell Henry Redmond Smith. Roan Ann Specht. Jenna Allison Spear. Solara Pearl Stacy. Kimberly Marie Stanier. Clark Gillis Stevenson. Hershley Melody Sterling. Catherine Lucy Stevens. Emily Dana Stone. Aiden Thomas Sullivan. Claire Yuchen Sun. Olivia Rose Sutherland. Hayden James Taylor. Amy Sarah Tedeschi. Chenica Estash Tebow. Aiden Zeus Thorpe. Gabriel Anthony Tyne. Maxwell J. Topol. Connor James Trant. Samuel Allen Tull. Elizabeth Gabrielle Yumina. Joseph Larry Van. Cole Kennedy August Wagner. 
Benjamin Aaron Waldeck. Noelle Emerson Waldron. Lily Beatrice Burns Walker. Marshall Graham Wessel. Talia Westland. Jacob Angela White. Samantha Schuyler Wilder. Elijah Tyrese Williams. Brian Samuel Worth. Nicholas Hong Chu Wong. Noah Ellis Walcott Schickler. Nicholas Tai Wong. <laughs> Teresa Rose Wood. <laughs> Brandon David Wu. <laughs> Kalise Audrey Winter. Linda Zhu. <laughs> James Richard Yamartino. Well, the moment, the moment we've all been waiting for, would uh, soon-to-be graduates please stand? Please take your tassel and move it from the right to the left. You can now call yourself a high school graduate. Congratulations. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Have a great day. Nice job. Great job. I don't know if you're shaking hands. We can do that.